Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be painting these uh, Plastic Soldier Company 50mm British Second World War Late War Infantry. Uh, this is just going to show you how I do it. It's basically speed paint. These I got from uh, Firepower Gaming. Uh, they're a company based in the UK. Uh, check them out. I'll put the description in the uh, I'll put their link, sorry, in the description below so you can go and buy some stuff off them. Please do support the small companies. Uh, these are uh, on the sprue. There's 12 figures. I'm going to take you through all the stages that I do to get these uh, ready for tabletop uh, usage. So don't expect any golden demon winners here. These are literally going to be ready for painting using my normal three foot rule. So enough waffle from me. Let's crack on with these. So the first thing that we do is we clip off the Bren Gunner and his number two. So I'm going to build these on the sprue as they are now, just so they're uh, all together. Just be very careful using some clippers. Uh, take off the, the heads of these guys and then they will fit together quite easily. You can see there's the number two there just being clipped off. I'll try and clip, clip them as close as I can to the figure, but without damaging the figure itself. And then just clean that up with a sharp knife. Ensure that they, uh, all the mold lines are taken off them. And then I clip off most of the sprue so I can actually get the figure onto the, uh, the other half of his body quite easily so there's a little bit of space so I've clipped away quite a lot of the plastic of the sprue there you can see and just test fitting that he actually fits in or oh, the top half of him does uh, using liquid poly here because uh, it melts plastic it's perfect for this kind of stuff the hard plastic really good glue and then just stick them together and literally let them dry a little bit doesn't take very long but they are then in place do the same again with the the Bren gunner as well so this is just the preparation part of it all really I'm, I was thinking of painting these figures entirely on the sprues but uh, as you'll see in a bit I don't but I certainly I uh, undercoat them and paint the basics whilst they're on the sprue but uh, this is just an easy way of putting these figures together so it's a little uh, less difficult when you've got big fat sausage fingers like mine so the next thing I do then is I separate the heads from the sprue so I'm just cutting just as close as I can to the top of the helmets on all of these figures so just uh, clearing some of that plastic away and uh, putting together the figures where they fall to bits so I go through every single one of them on the sprue and then clip the sprue down so I'm getting rid of all the plastic that is around the figures so you'll see in a second so there you can see now the figures are only held on by their bases so uh, that's going to be an easy thing to cut off rather than cutting off the plastic of the helmets then we move on to spraying them with primer this is just a basic gray uh, primer you could paint this on by hand but obviously it's a lot quicker with the spray use it in a ventilated room and also i, I spray into a box here as you can see it's very well used uh, just to make sure that they're completely covered and then to speed up the process of painting I said you could really paint these entirely on the sprue if you wanted at this point but I've decided not to what I am doing though is I'm undercoating everything in English uniform because that's going to be the basic uh, basic colour for these figures and also it means that I have then got the the basics down before we even start doing anything else so I'm, I'm literally dabbing this all over the figures whilst whilst they're on the sprue like this it means I can move them around again to all the nooks and crannies if I need to uh, if I've missed places I'll wait till they're dry and you can see a bit easier if things are uh, missed and I'll go back and uh, redo them again or just fill in the, the spots here and there but this is just a way of just really speeding up the rest of the process of the painting you don't have to be too uh, clean or tidy here just as long as they're covered in the their basic paint so whatever their basic uniform color is the i would do them at this and now i'm clipping them off the sprue itself so this just makes things a little bit easier as i said because they're they're free of uh, all the rest of the 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 plastic so i'm just clipping off the bases and then i will clean that up with a sharp knife uh, very simply done this is a, uh, a nice easy process I've left the Bren Gunner and the Bren Gunner number two 
on the sprue for now because I want to be able to hold on to something when I'm painting those later on and they'll get based later. You'll see when I get the their bases a bit bigger than the individual bases of these uh, infantrymen. <clears throat> so I've now ended up with all of them off the sprue and as I say I clean off any little nubs of plastic from their bases just to uh, at this point just to make sure that they are going to fit onto their actual base their MDF base uh, nice and tightly so this is just using a sharp scalpel clean them off you could do this with uh, sandpaper or some kind of uh, any kind of cleaner or something and then I'm using 15 millimeter diameter uh, two millimeter MDF uh, bases. I use these all for all my individual bases. These ones I'm basing all individually for chain of command. Uh, if I'm doing them for I ain't being shot one on rapid fire, I probably do them in threes. But at this point, I'm doing them uh, individuals for this first set. So basically, get them all super glued down. Then using this plaster mix. I start to build up the base so you can't see the join between the plastic and the MDF base itself. Getting a tiny screwdriver, a flat headed one, I'll just smear small blobs of this around the edges just to round off that base. Uh, this is basically what I do for all my bases. Uh, it just have to be quite neat against the bottom of the figure or any of the bits that are sticking down just in case you get them covered in uh, the plaster. You don't. It, it, once it's dry it's quite easy to get off but it's better not to have it on in the first place so I'll go all the way around with these figures they take a little while uh, a minute or so for each one this is a, a longest and boringest process if if you're doing more than say the 12 figures here it can take quite a long time so it's worthwhile just sitting down and, and just banging these out and you know not doing anything else use it as a therapy if anything else uh, just because you don't have to think about anything as you're putting them on and then i'll just wipe off any excess with my finger which also helps shape the plaster itself as well into a slightly rounded uh, shape against that base uh, pretty simple nice and easy but as i say it takes quite a long time uh, skip to the end there with uh, with the with the magic of television and then that's all them done once that is dry, I'll usually leave it for about 24 hours. Uh, because it's only a small amount of plaster, it doesn't take very long to dry. But then I will uh, daub on or paint on a PVA glue, a pure PVA glue. You can, uh, you can water it down a little bit, but I don't bother. And then just dip them in silver sand. Uh, this is some sand I've had for years. I've got a massive bag of it, and I've still, I'll probably never use it in my lifetime. But... Uh, I basically do this with all my basing. So basically paint on the PVA, as I say, it's usually just straight out of the, the tub, the PVA. And it, it can be quite difficult to see because obviously it's it's clear, so you can't actually see anything on it. But then debit in the, in the sand itself, and there you go. That's it. That's your textured base now. So we do that with all the other figures. Uh, the big base there is going to be for the... Uh, the LMG and the number two crew so there's going to be two men on that that's why I've got it normally I'd use those those size bases for three figures or for weapons crews like that and then once that is dried again probably another 24 hours uh, a little less if you've got a hairdryer or something and then I will paint them in intermediate green by Vallejo this is going to get darkened down so don't worry too much about how bright it is at the moment uh, and when I'm painting on to the sand, uh, I try to stipple it on because if you paint it uh, in the traditional way of left to right, then you are going to probably take off some of the, the sand itself. So I try to dab it down in stipples, uh, as you can see, and obviously paint the edges of the base as well because the MDF soaks up paint like nobody's business. As you can see there, I'm dabbing it down on uh, from above onto the base itself just to try try to minimize the loss of sand across the entire base so that that's painted in um i will usually add a bit of water to the to the green paint here just to let it spread around into the sand the sand is very good at soaking up the, the green paint you can paint bases any color you want a lot i know a lot of people at the moment seem to be painting them in like a stony color i always do mine in green because my gaming boards are green uh, and it fits 
well with with the gaming board so that's why i paint them green but this is just my process for doing this it's a very simple uh three-step process and this is the first part of it just be a bit careful around the feet don't worry too much because you have at this point you haven't painted the boots anyway but you don't want to get too much onto the rest of the uniform of the the soldiers and then we go on to stage two which is an ink wash of flat earth by vallejo uh, really water this down so it flows really well you can see it's not a thick paint there what you want is the kind of consistency i've got of it there really which is probably you know five parts water to one part paint that's not an exact science you just have to do it to whatever as long as you can see the green through it uh, what you're wanting to do here is just basically get this this is going to be your base layer uh, which will sit on the on the green itself very simple uh, just work your way through all the figures as I am doing there on each of the bases ensure that your brush is wet and the paint is wet and then the final third part of the base is dry brushing and I know a lot of people don't like to do their bases first I do if it's an individual figure like this or uh, small bases this is literally dry brushing yellow paint over the top of everything we've done. We dry brush by dipping your uh, paint, uh, your paintbrush into the paint itself and then wiping off as much as possible. Get as much off because you can always put more on, but you can't take a lot off. So you can see there, each one that I've done, it actually picks the yellow paint has been picked up on the green there, uh, just to give it a slight different colour. So you've got the green paint the brown ink wash and then a yellow dry brush over the top of all of that and that's it that's the uh, base is done for now we'll come back to those later and then i just go back because the dry brushing is quite messy i'll just go back with english uniform go around the legs of the figures just to ensure that any yellow that has got dry brushed onto them by accident is now covered as well so that's them pretty much done and I move on to the helmets. This was Brown Violet by, uh, or Violet Brown, I can't remember which it is, by um, Vallejo. I'll put all the descriptions for the, the paints I've used in the in the description of the video below with links. And this I just paint on the top. These do have camouflage netting on, uh, but from photos I've seen, the, the actual uh, cloth that they use seem to be about the same colour as the, the, uh, the helmet that's painted anyway. And also, when we ink wash it, that will give you a bit of a different colour. So I wouldn't worry too much. If you wanted to paint all the individual uh, bits of camouflage netting on top of the paint, on the top of the helmet, you could do. But uh, we're painting these quick to get them onto the tabletop, and that's uh, our main goal here. So I'm not going to bother. So I'll work my way through, nice and easy. Uh, and then we're on to painting the khaki of their equipment. And again, I've looked online. Uh, various photographs and things and some of the webbing that the British soldiers are wearing is is a darkish green some of it is this khaki uh, it really depends I think on the manufacturers the term where it was produced uh, what it's been used for how long it's been being used for you know if it's weathered that kind of thing so I just went with khaki I thought that's a good enough color and then painting the putties as well uh, in that same same color as well so this you can see why I've left the uh, machine gun crew on the sprue at this point so I'm just using the sprue to hold on to as a thing that I can uh, hold on while I'm painting so I'm not damaging any of the paint on the figure itself so I work my way through all the khaki that's needed to be doing the water bottles the uh, ammunition pouches and again the putties on the front you're not even going to see this stuff but I painted this on anyway just because I'm a completist and I work my way through all the rest of them as well this is a a relatively simple step but there's quite a lot of work there's a lot of khaki on these figures I wouldn't worry too much about being too neat because again if you wanted to you can always go back with your English uniform later on and just cut in parts where uh, where you may have just gone over the top with the khaki uh, some on some of the lines and things you can always go back uh, one other thing to mention is yes I do paint the uh, the straps of the guns as well in khaki so that's just another a little thing there to add on but relatively simple step uh, 
the, just try to be as careful as you can because there's a lot of small lines on this because of the the straps for the webbing and things the what you could do is do all the big parts first and then come back and do all the the straps later but i decided not to i just wanted to do each figure and then finish them off and have them done all at once but this is probably the neatest you're going to have to be on these figures and as i say don't worry too much because you can always go back and clean them up anyway with your english uniform that you've already got on so as you can see we're already speeding through them anyway once this this section is done it's all downhill from here really so that's it just the last one there done easily nice and nice finish and then i go and i do the boots I don't really like painting boots for some reason. I don't know why I have a, a bit of a, a weird fear of it. So in this case, I just went back and did them before I wanted to do anything else. Uh, these are painted in Vallejo's Leather Brown. Again, very, very easy. Just use a small brush and ensure that you get cover the boots. The LMG and his crewman were nice and easy to do because they're just still on the sprue. So just basically go around the boot itself have to be a little bit more careful with the actual figures uh, that are already on the bases because you don't want any paint if you can avoid it going onto the base itself so again just be careful just use a very small brush and it's all near just painting lines very quickly around the boots you can always cover up any mistakes with static grass which will I'll show you later on anyway but I would uh, at this point essentially try not to get any mistakes on the on the base just try to be as neat as you can with the boots uh, get this little step out of the way because as i say i don't particularly like painted boots don't know why but i just don't like it uh, and then we're on to painting beige brown for weapons uh, any wood so this is stocks uh, stock on the uh, the bren gun there the lmg number two doesn't have any beige brown on but all the rifles i paint all my rifles in beige brown uh, again another Vallejo paint so this is just another quick step because they don't have much uh, any more wood really I suppose you could paint the entrenching tool in uh, beige brown if you wanted to the handle of it that hangs down on their sides but I didn't bother because I'd already done that in khaki so I'm just painting rifles here this is just going through all their uh, my, uh, Lee Enfield rifles in the beige brown just ensuring that you get all the stock even the stuff that's under there under their arms that you may not notice immediately working all the way through and then they're done and then I go back and I'm painting flesh now uh, there are things like skinny flesh tone and stuff like that by Vallejo but I never use it I use uh, tan yellow which I think is a much better uh, approximation of Caucasian flesh at least so that's what I use and I will again just go back work, working your way through everybody with uh, their hands and their faces at this point because that's all you can see just to reiterate you don't really need to be particularly neat if you don't want to because you can always go back and just cover anything up with the English uniform again your base coat just go back and cut in lines where you may have just gone over the edge so I wouldn't worry too much about being incredibly neat at this point obviously you don't really want to be painting stuff twice so if you can you know try to keep within the lines of the figure and the mold itself in this in your first pass because it's just going to be make life a bit quicker for you later on but as I say you don't you don't really have to uh, be be perfectly neat and practice makes perfect at the end of the day I'm never particularly neat with my figures it's the three foot rule where these things are on the table you're not really going to see them this is probably the closest you'll ever see them anyway whenever when you're playing with them just because you're you're pretty close with them while you're painting but when they're on the end of a six foot table you know will you really notice that the hand is a little bit too big or whatever you know doubt it so that's it, that's the flesh done, very simply. Uh, I did actually paint the rock that the LMG is on uh, in neutral grey. I need them to done because I already painted it in grey anyway and it will get ink washed later. Uh, but I just did that just to give it a, a slightly darker colour. Uh, but now I'm going back and doing all the metal parts and this is in oily steel by Vallejo. So this is mostly the brain gun itself. 
this may look a little bit bright at this point uh, because he hasn't yet to, he's yet to be ink washed uh, the magazines that the number two is holding are also painted in this uh, brain guns and, and most weapons are generally in, a, in quite a blackened metal but you know we're using a bit of artistic license here just so they stand out a little bit more than uh, normal and then I paint the ends of the Liam fields oh sorry this is not Liam field this is another this is a second LMG guy in this these 12 so he his all gets painted up uh, I didn't actually notice he was the second LMG guy until I started painting them didn't realize I thought there was only one but so the Lee fields I'll paint the end I'll paint the uh, the breach and also if there's any bands metal bands on them as well I'll paint those as well uh, if they're obvious but generally you don't really see the barrel of the gun because it's, it's embedded within the the stock anyway and that is then finished pretty much we're 99% done now so I now ink wash every single one of them in Agrax Earthshade this is Games Workshop's uh, ink wash it's my favorite it's fantastic stuff really really nice ink wash so I just basically slop this on all the figures on every single bit of them making sure you get into all the nooks and crannies you know use a good a good uh, paintbrush on this just so you can actually get into all the areas but don't worry too much as long as the the figure is entirely covered and it's as simple as that really nice and easy and just work through all of the other figures as I say just ensure that all the nooks and crannies are covered in this this is a really really nice wash it doesn't take very long to dry as well which is nice if it's a nice sunny day put them in the sun and they'll be dry in no time at all or use a hair dryer just to give them a few blasts and again they'll be dry in no time uh, the longest process in any of this is the drying in between but usually I'll have other th figures that I'm painting whilst this stuff is drying so you know just got one bit, one batch of figures on the table I'm gonna have several and then once it has dried I then go back and I will paint faces and hands again in that tan yellow uh, this is kind of like a highlight so you don't have to do all of it just the bit the raised bits and this just kind of makes them pop a little bit on the uh, on the on the table because we recognize human faces uh, and human skin and things so we're basically you know you, you, these things stand out when they're on the table then a little bit more rather than just a dull uh, a dull look across there uh, across the entire unit but the rest of it I don't bother with you could do highlights but I don't bother because the agrax itself is is good at uh, dropping away from the highlights and then I'll cut the LMG team off their sprue you could add a little bit of uh, paint on the on their base on their sorry on their on their feet where you've cut off the plastic uh, I'll just do that with some leather just to cover up the where the plastic is showing through uh, you could wash it and do all kinds of stuff if you wanted to as well just to disguise it a bit more but you can see how I'm using these now on the longer base this is a a flames of war size small base i use these for for multiple figure bases and in this case this is the lmg crew so super glue these into place and then that's them done i then varnish everything with Withenson and newton professional artist varnish again uh, ensure that you're you've got good ventilation and you're doing it in a box or something or outside and this is the best varnish on the on the market as far as I'm concerned and then finally we're on to the bases themselves we go back to the base so painting PVA glue on to the, the base I dip them in static grass you can use a static grass applicator I don't bother at this uh, this scale 15 mil I'm quite happy with the grass being like that if you blow on it it moves the grass about a bit anyway so you don't really need to do an application to it and work your way through until you finish that and then I will add some grass tufts where I think they're needed on the smaller figure bases I don't need them I generally don't do them but on the bigger one just to break up the shape of the space of the base itself I'll add some grass tufts so I'll put a couple of different ones on there just to add a bit of interest to the LMG base as well as much as anything else and that's then finished that's it uh, thanks for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please subscribe uh, for more painting videos in the future